What's up guys? Today we're checking out a game called Salt and Sanctuary. This game was out on the Vita, the PS4, Windows, I think it even made its way to Linux, I think. Uh, but it's been out for about a year and a half to two years now on uh, other platforms and everything. And of course, the big indie push that we've seen uh, going to the Switch. Uh, this is another game that happened to push over the Switch. Of course, this is probably the best portable way to play this game. Um, it, it was also on the Vita, but of course the Switch, uh, bigger screen, um, runs games better and everything than the Vita, so there you go. Uh, but if you're curious as to what this game is, maybe you missed out on it on the other platforms or whatnot, um, this is, uh, pretty much a video kind of to go over it and to give you an idea as to what the game is. Now, I do know some of you will watch, um, with, like, kids and stuff and everything. I just want to let you know that this is... A pretty violent game in the sense that there is a lot of blood and dismemberment and everything. Just to give you a heads up um, before we get into it here. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to play a bit of Salt and Sanctuary. This is the opening uh, bit. Like, this is basically right in the beginning. So it shouldn't be too spoiler-filled or anything. Um, I went ahead and jumped on one of my uh, other accounts so you guys could uh, see kind of the beginning of it. Um, so you don't have to worry about being uh, hit with any spoilers or anything or anything like that. So we're just going to play a bit of it. So you can get uh, an idea as to what this game is. It's essentially, if you haven't already figured it out, a 2D Dark Souls inspired game. And it is heavily Dark Souls inspired. As you can kind of tell by the, the health bar and the stamina bar at the top, they definitely took a lot of inspiration from the Dark Souls series. Um, and, that, you know, that, that's, it's good because the game itself, I think, is different enough, obviously, from the mechanics and everything. But it is still kind of that same type of challenging type game with the stamina bar. Uh, you level up a lot of uh, a lot of RPG elements in this. It even has like the sphere grid kind of from Final Fantasy uh, X, which is pretty cool. But we're gonna go over all of that and, and play a bit. I'll also give you guys some uh, some handheld footage as well towards the end. So if you want to kind of see it playing in handheld mode, because uh, I know a lot of people ask me how does it play as a handheld. Uh, game. We'll, we'll check that out, that out as well for you so you can see that. So right now we're kind of playing through the beginning uh, and we, we took over the sanctuary that's back there and uh, y y the title Salt and Sanctuary, basically you have Sanctuary, the sanctuary that I, I picked up and everything and then you use salt to level up and everything and you get salt as you play through. I actually have a couple salt pouches as well. Again, reminds you kind of of like the, the Dark Souls Bloodborne type uh, game where you have pouches of uh, essentially experience uh, that you can use to level up or, or buy items or whatnot. Um, we do have gold and salt though, so they do have two different uh, types of currencies. And you also pick up uh, offerings that will give you different things for your home base, which will I'll show you all of that as well. And you pretty much just go through the the towers and everything. You fight bosses that are they're pretty cool. Um, in the beginning, actually, you lose to a boss, and that's kind of how they started off. It's one of those type of games, right, where they, they start you off with a boss that just wrecks you. <laughs> uh, they give no chance against it. Um, and uh, and then you, you kind of start up here, uh, and we're kind of going through this this tower and everything. So it's it's a pretty cool, uh, almost almost Metroidvania, I guess, kind of. I guess, yeah, I guess you could kind of call it a Metroidvania, um, because you technically go back through and everything, and you can grind away to level up. Uh, like I'm level, they start at level three. Um, so when we do level up here pretty soon, because I think I can level up now technically, uh, I'll show you some of the stuff you do when you level up. But right now I'm kind of just grinding away because the first boss is right, is literally right up there. Um, basically, I'd be at the first boss right now. I could, I could probably beat the first boss without leveling up. Uh, leveling, of course, helps you, um, makes you stronger and everything. Uh, I, th I might be able to. We could, we could take a shot. We could take a shot, okay? We'll see how that goes. Although, he will keep all of my salt if he kills me, um, which is always fun. That's another mechanic kind of taken from uh, uh, the Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and everything. If you've been playing any of those, when an enemy kills you, they keep your experience, essentially. you got to go kill them to get it back. Uh, but why not? We'll take a shot at it here. Um, I'm trying to think. Do I have... See, I have enough, like vials. I even have throwing daggers that I can throw at him <laughs> over and over again. But basically this boss, the Sodden Knight, is like the first boss that you run into. And uh, we're gonna, I guess we'll take a shot at him. Why not? So they pretty much try to get you to use your uh, stamina wisely, essentially, in this game. That's kind of how they, how they do it. They try to get you to use your stamina correctly um, because you can get caught pretty easily uh, oop, with not having enough and he'll just kind of smack you pretty well. Um, he's going to jump right after his lightning. There we go. Got to get out of the way because he's going to 
really get after you there. Oh man, lightning again. There we go, got him. It just, uh, he, I think he'll, he'll kill me once, I think. Okay, yeah, that's fine. We got him though, we got him, he's good. So that's the, I guess that's the first boss that you run into. I think he's supposed to be easier uh, than uh, pretty much all of them, essentially. Uh, but when you get the hang of dodging with a certain amount of stamina and blocking, you can block some of his attacks, so it makes it a bit easier to do that. Uh, we get a key from him, um, and we're gonna go back down here now. We're gonna go back through, and we're, take, we'll go back to the sanctuary and actually do some leveling as well now. Um, since we, uh, since we just defeated him, we should get uh, a couple of levels, I think. I'm trying to think of how, uh, 1700, that actually might be three levels. I'm trying to think of how many, uh, yeah, it might actually be about that, because I have some pouches of salt also that I can, uh, that I can, uh, cash in, and that should get us a couple, and I can show you the sphere grid as well for when you level, and, uh, there's a, there's a lot of that in this game to where you do, um, where you're leveling and everything, uh, to try to make your character better against... Uh, obviously the bosses that you run into that get progressively harder as you play through. I do like the visual style in this game. Uh, the visually it's, it's a, it's a cool looking game. It's not like a, like, it's not like a graphically amazing game or anything, but, oh, lock of hair is actually good. I can actually use that for, um, an upgrade to give my weapons holy power. That's cool. Uh, it's not like a graphically impressive game or anything, but I kind of li I like the art style. So we'll actually make an offering for a merchant and a blacksmith that actually brings both, as you can see there, a merchant and a blacksmith into my sanctuary here. Um, I, I like the kind of the art style of the game. So 560 salt to level up once the first time, I'm level four now, we'll level up again for 600 salt. And I think I can cash in one of these pouches of salt and level up again. Oh, wow. Okay. Never mind. 640. There we go. Just what I have here, I can level up. So gain three levels there. Let me, um, let me back up and actually see how many of these pouches of salt, uh, bundles. Oh, I have one. I thought I had more than, oh no, I, I, have, I have a couple. Never mind. We have a couple there. So I can, uh, let's, let's go ahead and drop these in real quick. Boom. Cash some of these in. See what, um, see how many I have out of this. Um, there we go. Five, six, six. Okay. So I'm, I'm off by a little bit. That's fine though. That's fine. So let's, uh, let's level up and do the tree of skills. So this is what I was talking about where it kind of looks like the sphere grid from Final Fantasy X. You can see how much stuff you, as you level up, you get basically these orbs that you can use to then, uh, kind of move around this grid here and add different abilities, whether it's, uh, more stat points or um, the ability to use certain types of weapons. Like for example, I'm, uh, I have these two that you, you pretty much have from the start as a knight, um, heavy armor and uh, sword fighter. And I believe sword, second sword fighter, I believe is up, okay, class two sword fighter. So I was gonna work towards that so I can get obviously the better swords, do more damage. So we'll start with the uh, class one pikeman. That also gives me a point of dexterity. And uh, then we'll move up here for another point of strength. There we go. And uh, I need actually two to go to the next, uh, to go to class two sword fighter. So I need to level up one more time, which actually won't be too bad. And then I can get uh, the next swords and whatnot, if you will. Um, so I'm gonna save that uh, to, do, to do that. Then you have uh, blacksmith here, which I do need more money, I think, to really do a lot, but you can, um, I, can uh, I can buy like uh, potions and, um, and uh, everything here. Point, uh, Bell of Return, for example. So I have, uh, okay, there we go, we got that done. And now we can kind of run around here and get some some more salt to level up, and then we can actually press on further into the game. Um, that's after the first boss we just defeated there. Actually, I have a couple guys here that you can um, you can actually uh, get him to. Uh, we can actually get uh, some salt off of them. Six fifteen. Okay, so not too much more. So you have uh, you have a shield that you can use as a knight. There are different classes as well. Like I could have been like a mage, a thief. Uh, there's a couple others. There's a, a obviously you, you have spears and everything like pikesmen and all that. Um, and uh, you can choose in the beginning what class you want to use, or as you go through, you do um, unlock the ability to use different weapons and everything. Like I, I unlock the ability to use a, a like a pike, I use a, a spear and everything. Um, so I have all of that now as as you go through, and you pretty much get different weapons, different abilities, and it's it's it is a heavy RPG. Um, which is cool. Like I said, it feels like a Dark Souls game. It gets pretty difficult too. It really does. Some of the bosses get hard, uh, as you expect in, in a game that is modeled 
you know, after a Dark Souls style game. Um, that makes sense. So if you're if you're buying into this, thinking it's going to be easy, you're, you're probably not going to have a, a lot of fun with it. Then it's designed to be pretty difficult. Um, but you can you know you can grind away, level up, get stronger. I do think it's a bit more forgiving in that sense than Dark Souls. Um, they also drop off a lot of these uh, little hint things, but I do think it's a bit more. Uh, forgiving than Dark Souls. Also, the fact that it's it's a it's a two D game, so it doesn't have um, the three D bit of motion is probably also a bit easier for some people to kind of do. Um, so I actually like this game for the most part. It just it gets so aggravating as you get further in. Some of the some of the bosses, man, they are who they are not fun. <laughs> they get very very difficult. Uh, as you get further, but uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fun game. Fun 2D action RPG style game made up in, in the same uh, uh, style as a, as a Dark Souls, so, you know, it's not bad. It's $17.99, so it's not, like, super expensive either um, compared to, obviously, other games, um, so. But uh, let's, let's kind of play around here a little bit. We're going to jump you over to handheld mode, so you can check that out there. This is just a look at, uh, at Salt and Sanctuary. Give me an idea if it's a game for you or not. Um, just so you have a quick look at it. Um, some gameplay, some thoughts on it. Um, oh, oh no, bets. Okay, got him. Uh, and uh, it's, it's available now. It's on uh, pretty much everything, I think, except for the Xbox. I don't think it's on the Xbox yet. I say yet, because it probably will eventually go to the Xbox. I know it's on Windows and um, everything else. There's another uh, a Stone Cleric for my, my Sanctuary back there where I can get another another person to buy stuff and upgrade things for me. And I actually have enough salt now to level up again. So there you go. And that's, that's kind of what you do. You kind of go through, you get to new areas, you grind, you get, uh, as you play through, you, you level up, you fight new bosses. Um, it's just a good time. So if you like 2D challenging games, this, this might be a game for you. Um, I'm gonna jump you guys over to handheld mode now, uh, just so you can check it out there, see how performance is there. Thanks guys for watching. Hopefully this gave you an idea as to what this game is exactly and if it's for you. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it. Uh, dislike it if not, and I'll see you guys in the next video.